me, bastard. Come on, man, let's go! Only a little further left. Pull two lads, we've got to get that bird hey. planted by sunset. I can't! Hey. Damn it, Silver! You slackin' swine! Take your ass back to the boat and wait my return! I come. Oh, that captain of ours will be dancing with old Jack Catch soon enough. Yeah. I'm gonna pull a rabbit out of his arse. Make him eat it raw. Come on, lads! All in good time, Billy. There's the stench of a curse on this island, Long John. Yeah, it's farts, blood, and cheese, Billy. Sorry, sir. I thought it was a rock. Ha! Rock collector, are you? You get. Shut your gob. Time to pay the piper. I'll oh, have your head for this disobedient silver. Kill him! Kill him, that bunch of mutinous scurvy dogs! Kill them or face death yourselves! No one to help you? Yeah. Must be the size of my fizzle or my charming disposition. <laughs> <laughs> this is my treasure, Silver. And I'll be dead before I give it to a dog like you! From your lips to my fizzle. He's dead! Well, I guess we'll have to bury old fizzle lips. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that be that gonna look good on you, Captain. I a lot better than it did on him. Oh, Captain. Captain, who's got the rum? Here you go, uh, Cap. Captain, Captain. There's a lot of gold we have in that chest there, Long John. Ah, you're breaking my heart, Billy. Watch him, Captain. Watch him. <laughs> Tell me you're joking, so I don't kill you by mistake, Billy. This isn't personal, Long John. You're a dead man, Silver. Here we go.
Have you had enough today, Mr. Falcon? No, I haven't had enough. I will not be beaten by a little tadpole like yourself, Jim. Another then. Why not? I hate this. <coughs> All right, Jim. You've had your fun for the day. Why don't you come help me move these barrels of ale? How much do we owe you? Two pence. Two pence. It's a lot more than two pence. Take it. There's more where that came from. Coin is no object to someone in my line of work. I have more money in my left pocket than you make in an entire year. You look awful familiar, lass. You must be mistaking me for somebody else. All right, Jim, let's go move that ale. I don't think I can stand. Three pence? Not a bad take. Business has been picking up. I uh, hardly notice. This day here seems to blend into the next. Well, how's that coming? Even with business picking up, it'll only be years before I can purchase a first-rate ship. And then? Make something in my life. Go see the globe. That sounds grand. Wouldn't you miss this place? This place? I think not. It's better suited for an old man. Not someone who longs for excitement and adventure. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Excitement and adventure. You, Jim Hawkins, want to be an adventurer? Yes. Well, I hardly think you're suited for it. What's that supposed to mean? You are a fine innkeeper. You're popular with all the locals. You should be happy with what you have. I have a life of boredom. With no chance to prove my worth. A man's worth is not set by wild adventures. It's set by the measure of your character. And you are a fine and worthwhile man indeed. I will take your compliment. But I reserve the right to disagree. <laughs> ah, most pleasantly situated grog shop. Watch company, mate. Not hardly, especially when we're close, friend, which we are. Perhaps I can entice you to extend your operating hours. This is a sixpence. Minted from the Queen's gold mine itself. Your royalty. Uh, you might say captain. Captain of the sea or from the... There is no other kind, lad. Your job, boy. Is fetching me my rum. Now get to it. Billy Bones!
close early more often. Careful, Jim. I don't like the looks of this. Uh, they're just two old sea dogs. Nothing to worry about. When is a good time to start worrying? Careful now, Billy Bones. Your aim isn't what it used to be. Barky! Whatever Brontus, my Cyclops friend, is drinking. And unless you're planning on holding me for the king's ransom, Billy, I'd be suggesting that you put away that musket. There's no powder in this gun anyway, pew. <laughs> Here's to you, sus. Sir, uh, now you're starting to make me feel old. Uh, and for you. Uh, Why don't you look in the mirror, you rotting old dog? Aye, tis a young man's world. Did you sail with the captain? The captain? Him? <laughs> uh, no man has served under this scoundrel and pirate, to be sure. Pirate? He's drunk and unbalanced. You talk like that to me again, Pew, and I'll cut your tongue right off of your jaw! I can't. What's your business here, Pew? Hi. Black spot. What is the black spot? Is this your doing, Pew? I am but a lowly messenger. Tell Silver that he's out of time. <coughs> My days are marked regardless. He wants the map. My curse for charting Skeleton Island. It is a king's treasure. Hidden in the bowels of Satan himself. Mark my words, blind pew. You would do well to leave well enough alone. The devil can keep his treasure. Scared, Billy Bones? The map, Billy. You're a dead man, pew. You're dead by your own hand. Go ahead, blind pew. Take it. Many thanks, Billy. Many thanks. Oh, Blind Pew. You should know that that musket has no powder in it. However, this one has all the powder in the world. Slug bastard! Specific. Pirates? What business would they have with you, sir? Just robbery, I suspect. Indeed. What is your business, Mr. Uh, Hawkins, Jim Hawkins? Hawkins, you're Mortimer's boy. Yes, I run the inn now. Your father was a good man, and a good soldier. My 
I suggest it be best to follow his lead and not consort with pirates. These men, they're men of low character, assassins, thieves, rapists. Best not to commiserate with them, yes? Agreed. I take heed to your advice, sir. You know, Jim, many young men in these ports looks to piracy for adventure and excitement. If that's what you crave, might I suggest conscription? A soldier's life is highly romantic, sir. I know this from my father's experience. Now, what it lacks in romance, it more than makes up for with honor. Are we finished here? Yes. Thank you, sir. I will consider what you've told me today. Good day. Good day. I don't buy it. Not one word. They were drunk. Dead drunk. Lively. Ripe and smelly. Hmm, dead drunks to be sure. Very Lively. sure, Jim. I wonder what Eliza Scott is doing. Did I tell you I took a fancy to her at Kurt's Gala Ball? There are advantages to being a doctor. I could suggest certain examinations uh, that might seem a little too body to the common fellow. Livesley. What? Please look at this. What do you think that symbol is? An insect. I don't fashion any idea, Jim. Put it down. You have a bar to stand to. They're pirates, I'm sure. They talked of a map and a treasure. Please, you're not a pirate. You're not a scoundrel looking for treasure. You're an innskeeper. An innskeeper with foul ale, but an innskeeper nonetheless. Don't try to be something you're not. What if we could figure it out? What if it could be our treasure? Leave the dream into the romantics. Your world is based here, Jim, in reality. Lizzie. Lizzie, look. I'll be damned. That's a treasure map. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Well, that's off the South American coast near the Falklands. Yes. It's only about two weeks' travel. How big do you reckon this treasure is? They said it was a king's treasure. That sounds rather big. Mm. Mm. We're gonna need a ship and a crew. Well, Captain Smollett imports spices from India. The Frenchman? The same. Yes, but how can we afford a ship? The doctor's income is much more than the innkeeper's. But a far cry from a pirate's booty. Your map, my finances, our treasure. Agreed. Partners! Partners! Your President Jefferson has stopped all shipping into the Barbary Coast. Uh, we've heard there's a war brewing with the pirates there. Indeed, there is. Your colonists are quite a scrappy bunch. With all due respect, sir, we're no longer colonists. Haven't been for six years now? Six, yes. Of course, my friend. No disrespect. Please, tell me more of this journey. Uh, research. I want to do a little research on an island near the Falklands. Research? What type of research? Entomology. What? Bugs, Monsieur Smollett. Um, bugs, yes, bugs. Smollett. Jean-Michel Frédéric Smollett. Captain 
Jean-Michel Frédéric Smoyet. Of course, Captain. Bugs, I see. And it's just the two of you. And a uh, small group of researchers. You know, uh, scientific gentlemen. Yes. Mm. Today is your lucky day, gentlemen. My pride and joy, the Hispaniola is without a charter. I was going to take my girls on holiday. But I will take you and your men to this island. Perhaps it will be educational for all of us. Very good, indeed. Let's talk price. Yes. Let's. 5,000 English pounds, you must be desperate. Is that a deal? Remarkably good. Listen, we mustn't tell anyone about the treasure. Okay, we'll employ a small team of hands who know the real story. To everyone else, we're collecting bugs. What's wrong, Jim? Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to think of what to do at the end. We'll have that last look. Anne look after it. It's not a bad idea. That girl is sweet on you, Jim. Mark my words. A worse fate could befall a man than a night or two with her. Your gentleman friend, Lawrence. Doctor? This is uh, Squire Trey Lonnie. He's going to help us assemble our crew. It is a pleasure, Master Jim. Can I see it? South America, you say? I can help. Allow me, gentlemen, to fetch my associate. We're fornicating under consent of the king. Gentlemen, allow me to present. Friends call me barbecue. A pleasure. Hi, Uttar. I understand you're in need of a crew. Yes, you're Captain Smollett. The Frenchman. One and the same. Hi. You've heard of him? Oh, of course. He's a wonderful man, full of uh, life. May I see the map? Lovely. How did you come to own such a paper? Well, that is none of your concern. I can fill your hull with able men, sir. I'd be more than willing to be your guide on this excursion, but I feel I must warn you, gentlemen. It's a dangerous voyage, and that which you want to see is not for the faint of heart. Are you up for it, boy? Mm -hmm. You think you got the stomach? We're wasting our time. No, no, please. please. I apologize, sir, please. We'll have a wee dram. I didn't make any disrespect. You know, you're young, you are. And I see you're as smart as pain when it comes to matters of the sea. I see that when I first sat down here. And I'll talk to you like a man. I spit and swear that island, whether you know it or not, is cursed. I and may a cucumber fish sail right up my arse if I'm a lion. <laughs> People say that's the devil's playground. Oh yeah, I meant only to warn you, a person like you that's unexperienced such as yourself, of the potential dangers. You're not my father. No, sir. I'm not a child. No. I'm your employer. So I'm higher than him. So, have you considered my offer? 
you considered what you were doing? Of course. This is the opportunity I've been waiting for. For, for what? Search for buried pirate treasure? Run with scoundrels? Rape and pillage? We are to get the gold. That's all. An honest man earns his living. He does not rob the graves of pirates. A pirate's life is not one for a man of good character. Pirates live by their own laws, Anne. They're not tied to a single port or a single set of walls. If a pirate's life is one of freedom, so be it. That's not who you are, Jim. How do you know who I am? Perhaps I am best suited for the life of a pirate. Your romantic notion of these men is false. They are villains, the lot of them. And what do you know of pirates? I know enough about pirates and you. And when I came here penniless, you took me in paying my wages even when your business couldn't support it. And that is not the kind of man that turns to robbery and treachery. So you watch the place for me. You'd best close it down. Make sure you swap the jackets, Bill. Different day for a voyage. Are you ready, Jim? For what? Uh, for the first day of your life. Gentlemen, Mr. Hawkins, Dr. Livesley. Quite a fine ship, isn't she? Yeah, she's quite grand. Mm. Oh, this sun is treacherous. Yes. Let my yeoman take your effects. Ye! Please take Mr. Hawkins' things below deck. The real time? Mm. Never seen one in person. Another large crate for your insects, don't you think, Doctor? I might not big enough. It's the quantity of specimens we're after, Captain. Yes, indeed. Barbecue. Welcome aboard. I want to introduce you to the captain. Captain? Barbecue, this is Captain Smollett. 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 This is Barbecue. His cooking comes highly recommended. And he also, alone, assembled this crew. Gentlemen. Pleasure to find some. Monsieur Barbecue. Should I call you Biggie? You look like a slob. We never got dead in that outfit. And some things you should know. I detest eggs, and I want my cognac filled nightly. Do you understand? No eggs. Cognac. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well. My petite Jolie. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, these are my beautiful girls. Did you bring all of your things? Uh, oui. And where is Kiki? Uh, she's right behind us. Mm. The pleasure is all mine, ladies. Mm, enchanté. May I accompany you to your quarters? Uh, it would be wonderful, sir. Mm. Mm. Doctor? Cat! You seem quite young to have uh, some daughters. Well, thank you, Mr. Hawkins. I don't recall using the word daughters. Gentlemen! Let's get this voyage underway! Lay that order, sir. Is 
got a problem, Lieutenant. Not yet. Hope we have orders to place a garrison on every ship that leaves this port. Under whose authority? The Continental Congress and the President himself. Very well. And would this garrison be providing their own supplies? It's just me, sir. And I have my supplies. This is a pleasure voyage. I'm without an experienced first mate. It'd be an honor to perform the duties then, sir. Welcome aboard, Monsieur. Lieutenant, why these orders? Pirates, Captain. Seas are lousy with them. And Wilkins, mark my words, when you return from this voyage, that wig will have fallen out of fashion. I would bet my pension on it. No, I said no. How about some oil with cover? You're getting it on me. I said no. Okay. There you go. One more. There you go. Merci. Merci, Mr. Barbecue. Yes, sir. Doctor, please tell me more of this island. Uh, well, we know very little. Just that I have it on good authority that the insect specimens are quite spectacular. Oh, I did this, Bugs. Keeps them away from me. Well, see, I thought we were going to white sandy beaches, not looking for wee beasties. Patience, my dear, we are going to an island. I'm sure there'll be plenty of beaches for all of us. <coughs> <coughs> Jim. Easy, Bucko. You want to keep your stomach full? There. Why don't you go up on a bowsprit and get some of that salt water in your face? Huh? Don't feel bad, Jimmy. Even an old dog like me. Bothered by the views, you'll get your sea legs. Why don't we go below and get some grog? It'll clear your palate. Come on. your opponent's eyes. All in the wrist. All in the wrist. Speed is more important than force. <laughs> you, sir, you find something amusing in the situation. <laughs> With all due respect, sir, you seem to find more pleasure in humiliating the young sir than uh, giving him a solid education. And what would you suggest I do differently? Mr. Hawkins, he's instructing you to hold a sword like a dandy man in a real fight. 
speed is not as important as force that wins the day. And what would a ship's cook know of swordsmanship? Well, I've held a sword or two in my youth, sir. Let's just leave the training to the train, shall we? If Mr. Hawkins ever needs to peel a potato, I'll send him your way for tutelage. Roger. On guard. Perhaps there is something to the cook's technique. If you wish to fight like a savage. But the blade is an extension of your mind. If you want to mutilate something, blow it up with a cannon. Jimmy, the boot. Of course. Did you mean like that? Got a ship under our heels, and it took a lot of doing. I, I... Look at the lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> you're young, you are. But you're smart as paint. I've seen that when I first set eyes on you. When do we go, Captain? Frenchie, he'd like to flog a lot of us. You know, he sifts through our food, our rum, our larceny. He finds nothing but rat manure. <laughs> he must have developed a mighty craving for its flavor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Flint. We suffered for two years under his stubborn pride. We suffered greatly for that crocodilian treasure, and he wanted to kill us all to keep it secret. But, oh, his ellipse is no more. Thanks to you, Captain! Yeah. Yeah, that'd be the truth of it. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, we know where we're going. The rest of these fools. Frenchie, Lively the doctor, Jim Hawkins, the innocent. <laughs> uh, yeah, they moved so quickly to assemble their venture that they never examined thoroughly. Who they were hiring. <laughs> Innocent seafaring men we are. Aye. Hard working sailors. They're up there fornicating. <laughs> Under candlelight over a piece of a map. <laughs> we'll wash like a wave over the decks and take back what's ours. Dead. Did that employ Mr. Hart? I swear I'll call for the others. And I'll slit your throat before you even open your mouth. Call for the others, no need for violence. You're either a white bellied squid, or you're one of us. Which is it? Oh, really? Then tell me why I heard Ulysses, one of the fools on board. I called you innocent. That's a compliment coming from a salty dog like me. Is it now? Indeed it is. What are your plans? It's either or. Which is it? Is it mutiny? We're privateers, not pirates. We just want our share of the treasure. Aye. Aye. And what if we do not wish to negotiate? <laughs> then we're going to have to take more drastic measures. I suggest you take a step or two back, Mr. Silver. Boy, for sure, you're outnumbered. Yes, no, boy. To what do we owe this pleasure? Let me introduce you to Anne Bonnie. Captain, a woman on board ship! I thought she was dead. 
She's the most formidable pirate I've ever had the misfortune to encounter. Save the compliment, Silver. This pistol is packed with powder. I'm sure it is. The last time I saw you, you were sailing with Calico Jack. They caught you. You were sentenced to the gallows. Ah, well, clearly you were misinformed. Aye. Now, if you understand the king's English, as long as I'm standing, no one will lay a hand on him. If they do, they will deal with me. What the hell is doing, Squally? The captain, she's just a mere girl. I can take her. I once saw her take on 16 of the king's best. 17. Is it? Yeah. Let's bargain with the treasure. What do you want? Everything. Everything. We'll go to the island with you. We'll share the treasure equally. Fair? Do we have a choice? Uh, not much. <laughs> no one is harmed. We split the treasure and go peacefully. Agreed? Uh, now you're talking. <laughs> Fine. I'll inform the others of our agreement. Wait! Stop! Don't play the fool. Wilkins will have us dancing with Jack Ketch for past transgressions. Her too. Her too. That's true. What say you? came from a fella that died in the dry tortugas from a hammerhead. Listen to me, Jimmy. We need an earring that has enough gold in it, so if you die ashore, there's enough to bury you. Don't put this behind your ear. On three, ready? One, two. Ah, ah, there you go. Ah. The captain's teaching you how to be a helmsman. Yeah, I've learned a lot on this voyage, actually. It was a convenient cover. So you're a pirate. Suppose you're here for the treasure? No. I'm here for you. I guess that uh, explains your lack of skill as a barmaid. Here. I got this, my first voyage. It's always given me luck. Take it. You're gonna need it. Thanks. So, Anne Bonnie, did you have an appointment with the gallows in Virginia? <laughs> no. It's the Carolinas. Tomorrow's the big day. I and the captain shall leave Gray on the ship, but I don't trust him. So you two shall stay on. I, it shall happen soon. Right. Very soon. Okay. 
Silva? Yeah, you kept your end of the deal. I'm impressed. I'm not in the party of this negotiation with questionable Anna. Or am I, I assure you. We're almost there. The devil guards this place, the devil's platoon. What is on this island? Fantastic things. David Jones himself set it this up. Uh, perhaps I do feel better with your party in this voyage of ours. With me? I'm just a cook, your humble servant and guide. For it, Jimmy. <laughs> a little lightning scare you. Benjamin Franklin says, you got nothing to fear unless you got a rod sticking out your ass. What was that? That's silence. That's the sound of the devil, Jimmy. landing. We can take two boats ashore at a time. We will set up a lookout and make camp on the eastern beach. If we have to careen the ships, we should do so before the storm front swings back around. Agreed. My men will set up camp, and we will let the deckhands pitch the sheep. Huh? <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Well, it looks like we got your attention. Now, here's a list of my demands. Demands? Aye. We take over the voyage from this point forward. Have you lost your senses, Cook? I'll deal with you later, Wilkins. Here, Cookie. The name's Silver. Long John Silver. Captain Long John Silver. <laughs> Captain. Hi. I'm not surprised you don't recognize me. Those posters didn't do justice to my devilishly good looks. <laughs> you let these women go immediately! You're in no position to bark order, sir. I'll either cut your throat or put a bullet in your head or take your foreskin. I like that coat. Take it off. This is outrageous. Are you mad? Never! Take it off. Gray. Sir. Make sure our guests stay comfortable. Aye, Captain. You too. Lower the longboats. We're going ashore. Aye, 
Jimmy, you're with us. Jim. It's fine. I'll keep watch of our half the treasure. <laughs> keep moving, boy. Get our treasures, Jim. And me, pipe. Our. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all lazy dogs. I'll some after that door. Captain, Charlie, you gotta do the stench about it. Oh, yeah? You ain't telling me the dogs. Bugs? Bugs? Must fetch a blood to take back the ship. Agreed. We must disarm these pirates and catch them off guard the way they have us. Then what? We weigh the anchor and maroon these savages. What about Jim? Well, I am afraid Mr. Arkins may become a casualty of this affair. He shall not. We are your employers, sir. You shall do as we command. No, we must not. You and your friend have clearly been less than honest with Captain Smollett here. This was never an educational voyage, was it, Doctor? A ship full of pirates, an uncharted island. Dare I say this was a quest for treasure from the very beginning, was it not? Sorry. Vraiment. And how is this, sir? Well, it is indeed a treasure we seek. This island holds a great treasure, a king's treasure to which Jim and I have the map. Gentlemen, I am a ship captain, a man of honor, not a wretched pirate. We leave immediately. Well, we could share everything equally. Gold coin, silver, strings of pearls, no matter. You cannot seriously be considering this. Da, sour grapes. Tell me more of this treasure map. Where is it? It's in Jim's possession. With the pirates, unfortunately. Captain, I must protest. We are rid of the pirate scourge. We should make the safe haven. Not follow these fools on some quest for treasure. There will be equal share for you too, Wilkins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I wouldn't be so much interested in the, uh, the stolen loot as uh, fulfilling my obligations to the, the President and Congress, right? Yes. Agreed. Yes, agreed. Now, how to get these pirates? We must distract them. Yes, I know just the distraction. Uh, Monsieur, Monsieur, I, I, I don't even know this small little person. He's, he's a friend of mine said, let's go on an adventure. And, and I actually prefer the dirty, smelly pirates to him. Uh, uh, Tell me more about your exploits with Captain Peter Blood. Oh, Peter. Oh, oh mon dieu, I've fallen out of my dress! The dress now is it, huh? Attempt to deny you. This was long too. Oh. I disagree with the captain. Perhaps you should stay aboard and protect the women. I need to go ashore. Right. Forget that. Come with me. Quiet. And prepare for an ambush. Caution now, men. Steady your arms. Damn boys. Are there any indigenous natives on this island? What's the matter, Lysley? You are afraid of cannibals? Well, yes. Nothing is locked up this place or its inhabitants. 
Perhaps Silver and his men will be taken by the natives. Sorry, Ars, and he fell lifelessly like a sack of spots. <laughs> so, Jim Hawkins, what are you gonna do with your share of the booty? I haven't thought it through, really. Yeah. Well, when you set eyes on the treasure, it'll give you some ideas and put fire in your blood. Take a look at that. Get back. It's gonna be grand. It's gonna be. The sight of that treasure is only going to make you lust for more. That is the pirate's curse. We folk can barely enjoy our spoils. Always sailing for more. Aye, aye, aye. It's a grand curse to be burdened with, my dear. So it is. Did you see their faces? <laughs> you said... You said mutiny wasn't the plan. Ah, Wilkins and Frenchie, they're not to be trusted. I assure you, no harm will come to them, not from my end, but what if they fire first? What then? I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. There you go. And I'm sure they heard that trap you stepped in, Doctor, so they can't be too far. So be ready. I think we've got company, Captain. Trelawney, load up the muskets. You promised me! What do you think your friends came ashore for? A bloody tea party? Give me a light. They came to kill us. Barbecue! I can smell you from here. Come out now, unless you are a coward. Barbecue! Can you hear me? To the left. Oh, you look like a spud smuggler, Frenchie. You want your coat? Come take it. I will burn this filthy rag and take my clothes back when you meet my sword, Silver. Now stand down, you hot man and out gun. <laughs> you wish there to be no more bloodshed tonight, Silver? Captain Silver, you. Hey. Hey. Monsieur Piggy. My men and I will take our share of the treasure and return to the Hispaniola. You and your men are entitled to your share, but you must find your own transport from this island. <laughs> so you're discussing surrender? We agree. I can't believe he's discussing surrender. Here's your future. We take the Hispaniola when we get to land. We'll leave word of your plight. <laughs> he lied to me. Never trust a pirate. There's no dealing with these treacherous dogs. All right, when this breaks out, run for cover. And when will that be? Right about now. Oh, 
blasted his wing right off. <laughs> That's more frost, boy. Oh, my God. Back up. Let's go fill our pockets. Ah, quick! Into the woods! Which way? That way! So how long were you marooned? Two long and lonely years. I was first mate on a spice vessel. He's a pirate. Former pirate, sir. I don't have much of an occupation these days. Who did you sail with? Captain Flint himself. I was on his last voyage. So you sailed with Silver? Yes. That mutinous dog is the reason why I'm here. So you do know of this treasure? Yes. I know exactly where it is, but I have the map. Are you sure you can take us to this treasure? I told you, I know exactly where it is. We don't need this. What are you doing? You said Silver's alive. I've been saving one shot for that bastard. We must beat him to the treasure. Let's go. Yes, I assure you we can handle it. Mighty lot of treasure, boy. It's all right. No need for secrets anymore. Oh, jolly good. Another woman. My apologies, sir. Captain Smollett would not allow women on his crew. It's because they're considered bad luck on board. And judging by this voyage of ours, I'd say it's more than just mere superstition, wouldn't you? But your sword is more than welcome. There she is. My God. It's incredible. Who could have built something like this? No one knows, really. Legend has it it's been here for over a thousand years. Inside is buried the treasure of a thousand galleons. It's hardly a king's treasure. Is that it? Where's the rest of it? Can't be it. All this way for a few pieces of eight. Hardly seems worth it. Something's not right. Green. Witchcraft. All right. Let's take this chest and leave this wretched place. God bless all here. I spit and I swear. I'll separate your livers from your spines. Ben gone as I live and breathe. I'd just spent two years with the creepy crawlies. Last time I saw you, you set your head on fire with some gunpowder. Unfortunate accident. Won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? You killed Livesley. I've killed better men for a lesser stare. 
What are you gonna do, spank me? You know, man of your word, you're a liar and a cheat. And a villain. Allow me. Soldiers were made for pirates. And this salty dog needs to be put down. On guard, sir. You got a grog sour mouth on your lambskin? There's no need for violence. We had a deal. Yeah, we had the same sure deal as a sea serpent. Has a watertight ass. Jim! Just a flesh wound. Ah. Annie. From pirate to pirate. Take your share. The only treasure I'm going to be taking is the head of Long John Silver. You're like a cow bunching against a fence post. Throw that pain in your udders. <laughs> This way, being carked by Long John Silver and his men. Oh, I always thought it'd be far more grand than this, Silver. <laughs> Whose side are you on? I had four pieces. They tried to take them. There you go. treasure right here that's what I was waiting for there's an island 30 miles from here littered with treasure now you're one of us you're one of us I'm no pirate I'm a man of honor careful Jim this is my fight Dan what do you want a man or a mouse Jim kill this lout and let's go home Shut up! <laughs> Now what? Why don't you use that fancy wrist crap? Six muscles in your face to frown, and only five to smile. Are you all right? Thank God. Now let's grab that chest and leave. Treasure! <laughs> 
Now you'll pay for your mutiny! <laughs> Untie the girls. Jim, you can move kids. Captain now, drop your weapons. Oh! Oh! Hey, Tadpole, how you doing? Have a rough drinking game for all time's sake. Go downstairs. Not tonight, Mr. Falcon, not tonight. Yeah. Are bad luck on board. I wouldn't sail without him. Hi. I think we have a volunteer for all the heavy lifting. Good. Then... Well, it's not over yet. Can we all run it? Unlikely. Girls, to the cannons. Jefferson's decision to take the flight to the pirates soon enough. The sea shall be safe for all travelers. I can only hope, sir. Your letters of mark, sir. Thank you. You and your crew shall sail under the protection of the United States of America. Welcome to life as a privateer, Captain Hawkins. Please, call me Jim, Lieutenant Jackson. It's Andrew. 
I've done your father proud, sir. Thank you. What do you need to do with Mr. Gunn here? In light of his heroic actions in the apprehension and dispatch of one Long John Silver, I believe I shall grant Mr. Gunn amnesty. You, sir, are free to go. But keep your nose clean, yeah? Ah, thank you, sir. It's a shame none of us got any of that gold, isn't that? Ah, tragedy, really. Good day, sir. Prepare for departure! Look lively, ladies! It's seven days to Port Royal! Pack your supplies, tight, and dry. Oh, that's gonna take some getting used to. Sorry I'm late, I had some business to take care of. But I did get the papers. Oh. So what's this, what's the plan? Uh, molasses, shipment to Port Royal, a company called Blackthorn. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yes, but while we're there, I thought we could investigate this. Well, that sounds more like it. Mm, and I'm sure there'll be pirates in search of it, no doubt. Definitely. Wait, wait, wait! Don't be so late! 